room. I'm reminded the Ramban in his Akdama to Taira writes that an egg of an ant is not small compared to the largest constellation as the Ramban felt that his mind was small cannot be the greatness of Taira. I am incapable of describing reversion. But perhaps if I just repeat a few small instances, small dots, people can connect the dots, and perhaps by connecting the dots, might be able to get some picture. I only hope that the picture you draw is not too small. I don't think those who remember him giving a shear, I don't think anyone ever saw anyone do anything with the amount of enthusiasm that he had when he gave a shear and said to him, If Tyre is compared to water, and every word of Tyre is a drop, when you saw a first room speaking, it looked like Niagara Falls. There was so much volume, there was so much power, there was so much behind it that it looked like it had gone forever. Every, every word, every time he said something, he said, it's so interesting. And every word was so interesting to him. No wonder he remembered everything, because everything was just so interesting. He took everything he learned in so deeply so that he should never forget a thing. And that's why he never forgot. I don't think we ever could imagine anyone to whom Tyre was more important than to him. No wonder he remembered it better than anyone else. There's no one else to whom it was as important. And besides for which, the Gemara says that Luke Megirsa, to remember Seattle and Shemaya. HaKadosh Baruch must have really, really loved him because he had Seattle and Shemaya. I remember going over to him once and I asked him about a Rashi. Rashi mentions a Dayoi, Lovay Menadin. The Dayoi didn't add up. I didn't understand it. And he says, Kik Nuch, you look up. But become a Dafkot Hay, Taisus on top. I took a look. It was clear as day. It was clear as day. I once asked him, perhaps there's a Maflekis, I know him between Rehid of Rabbana. Might it have something to do with the Machlechus Amayroin, Rabuna for of Chizdom, Baba Basra? Kiknuch, take a look. The Mitzvah Eisen in the back in Baba Basra. The whole Mitzvah Eisen was four and a half lines, and from that, I think, took a half a line, and there it was, like that. I remember once, I was learning, learning Trefus, Chavrusa, we got lost in a pre it was a, We had no idea how we got in and had no idea how to get out. And it was Shabbos, after davening, I went over to him and I said, I, I, I'm lost in a prima god. I told him. He started reciting it. He started reciting the prima god. It, it was unbelievable. I remember Amburin bringing Shlachmunas in. He would ask me, What did you learn? I told him a little bit of this, a little bit of that. He would take everything I learned and tie it together, like put a ribbon on top. <laughs> I remember once saying to him that there's a Gemara that Abaya, when he left Rabba, felt that he was full. He had finished the meal. When he came to Rav Mori, Rav Mori gave him 60 portions of 60 different foods and he wanted to swallow the plate. I told him, you know, sometimes, and the Gemara said, how could he, how could he eat 60 portions if he was full? The Gemara gives two answers. Sometimes a poor man is, is hungry, he doesn't realize how hungry he is. And there's always room for sweet stuff. I said, Rebbe, you know, sometimes you think you learn, you think you know something. And sometimes a poor man is really hungry and has no idea how hungry he is until I came here and heard what you said. And Rav Cholopsi Mashchiach, it's really sweet when Rebbe puts it together. But there was more to him than just 
tremendous knowledge. Because he had taken all that Torah in, because his essence was Torah, whatever he said was Torah. I mean, we all know Sichas Chulin, Shaltanir Chachamin, Vo'alei Vo'aleiba. We know Menoa Milsa, where is it that the people say something, and where is it that the Chacham says something? It has a source. It comes from Tyre. I think the Belzer of Sukhain and Ruchi used to say, Asmalel Kifit Manalis. If you learn, you'll find everything. If one would study the things that he said and things that he did, and then you would continue to learn, you would find that everything he did had a Makar somewhere. Even asking people, what are you learning? And promptly following up and what are you doing for Parnasa? Even that's also a Gemara. That's how, that's how Chachmi Yisrael used to greet someone. But I want to tell you just a few instances that I personally witnessed that were out of this world that could not have been but somebody who is totally, totally a product of Tiger. There was a man here in Montreal, Lytton Go St. Luke, he and his wife. They were both broken and battered people. They had gone through the war. He had been through before the war. Both broken and battered people. They had gone through the war. He had been through before the war. But he was very, very broken. Even after the war, he had a terribly, terribly hard life. I got to know him. He was a relative of a relative. And one day, I came to see this man. And he says to me, you'd never believe, and our conversation was in Yiddish, but I'll say it in English. He said, you'd never believe who called me. I said, who, who called you? Reverse from called me. Yeah? you never believe what he said to me. What did he say? He said to me, Bail, you know, you're from the old country, I'm from the old country, I want you to do me a favor. Would you be so kind to be my cousin? He said, what? He said, what does it bother you? You don't have Meshpuch, I don't have Meshpuch. Be my cousin, you don't want to, it's next. He says, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Shortly after this man was admitted into Maimonides, slowly he lost his mind. Whenever you saw him, he used to say, you know who my cousin is? Rav Hirschbrunk, Rav Hirschbrunk is my cousin. You couldn't have given this man millions of dollars, wouldn't have meant anything to him. But you were Machaya that man. Where did that come from? What, a, what, a, what an odd idea. It's very simple. Mishnah says that Aaron Akayim was Ayyav Shalom, Raid of Shalom. Chazal tell us he used to put his arm around the Balaveira and tell him, I'm your best friend. And then Balaveira would feel if Aaron's my best friend, then I, I better do Tshuva. I'm not sure if everybody that Aaron put his arm around did Tshuva. But certainly, he felt much better that Aaron was his best friend. Rav Hirschman felt he had a powerful position. He found the broken man, put his arm around him and said, be my cousin. For the rest of his life, this man was no longer a broken man. He had a cousin. You have to, you have to be a bentayra to come up with something like that. I'll tell you another scene. My mother, Allah Shalom, I moved her to Montreal after my father, Allah Shalom, passed away. And a few weeks after she was here, my mother called me and said, I'd like to go see Rabbi Hirschman. I said, I had no idea my mother had any idea who Rabbi Hirschman was. I said, how did you, where did you come to Rabbi Hirschman? She said, I read in the Algemeine Journal, a description of him, and I liked the way it sounded. I, he was the kind of bro that I would like to meet. Okay. So I called her a Hirschman, the Hirschman agreed that he can come over. The scene is very short, but it's engraved in my mind. We came to the door, the Rebbitson greeted us at the door, I introduced my mother to the Rebbitson, the Rebbitson to my mother. The Rebbitson said to my mother, can I take your coat? And my mother said, no, we're not staying long. <coughs> she showed us into the Hirschman's room where he was sitting and learning. The Hirschman asked us to sit down. My mother sat down, folded her arms, and said, my name is Ruchel Singer. I have nobody in the world except for my son. My son wanted I should move to Montreal, so I came here. I'm all alone. So I'm asking the Ruch for a brucha. 
So he said, uh, Hashem should help, you should have nachos from your child, and you should be healthy, and you should, things should go well. She said, thank you very much. She stood up, she opened her pocketbook, and she took out five dollars, and she gave it to him. He looked at her, and he put the five dollars in his pocket. Now you've heard that Rav Hirschman refused fortunes of money, but he took this five dollars. He felt that for this lady he needed to take the five dollars. There's a mission in Bikurim that when rich people used to bring Bikurim and gold and silver kalim, they used to return those gold and silver kalim to the rich people. But the poor people who brought, brought their Bikurim in baskets, the Kaihanim took the baskets because they gave with their whole heart and it's all they had and they knew that the people would be really, really touched if the Kaihanim took the baskets. I'm not sure if the reason he took the five dollars was the Mishnah Bikurim, but I'm sure that the Mishnah Bikurim and all the terror that he learned really formed everything that he did. He did it perhaps instinctively, but it was a product of a, a human being that was totally, totally, totally based on Torah. There's a passage in Shir Hashirim, the Reach Shmanecha Taif and Shemin Turak Shemecha. Rashi explains the Reach Shmanecha Taif and oil, perfumed oil, has a very good aroma. The Reach Shmanecha Taif and Shemin Turak Shemecha, but your name is even better than a perfumed oil. Perfumed oil, the aroma goes far, but a good name goes even further. I have no idea how far of a Hirschsprung's name went, but I'll give you one example. There was a young lady here in Montreal. She was a refugee. She escaped from Iran. Her whole family, her parents, her siblings escaped from Iran. Her parents and siblings somehow managed to get into the United States, but she never made it. She couldn't get in. She tried through Israel. She tried through Canada. Every time she got to the border, she was stopped. And American immigration had a file about her that she's not to be allowed with their states. So she was here in Montreal and her parents and family were in New York and she badly wanted to go for a weekend, take the Hyman bus on Thursday night and come back to Shabbos. So she applied for a visa and she was refused. She worked for me and I called up the American consulate and I asked, Ulai, maybe you can have Rahmanis and let this girl see her parents. I don't remember anymore if it was the consul general or another official his name, I think, was Silverman, and he said that he cannot issue a visa to her because, look, we know her family's in New York, we know that she only wants to go there to be able to stay there, and I have no right to issue a visa to somebody that I know is not going to come back. I asked him, was there any way that you can trust her that she'll go Thursday night? I remember anymore, it was the consul general or another official, his name, I think, was Silverman, and he said that he cannot issue a visa to her because, look, we know her family's in New York. We know that she only wants to go there to be able to stay there. And I have no right to issue a visa to somebody that I know is not going to come back. I asked him, was there any way that you can trust her that she'll go Thursday night and come back? I'm a Zoy Shabbos. Is there anything that can be done? He says, yeah, you can post bond. How much bond? If my memory doesn't fail me, I think it was a quarter of a million dollars. There's a chazan here, a chazan Frischman who got involved in trying to raise that bond. He had a hard time trying to raise that kind of money. In the end, the uh, consul official, maybe it was consul general, said that if Rabbi Hirschsprung signs that she'll come back, I'll let her go. I have no idea how he knew from Rabbi Hirschsprung, but that, that's called Toif Shem Nishem and Toif. By the way, Rabbi Hirschsprung told me, make sure she goes back. <laughs> <laughs> but, but she went under a version signature. I just want to be the sign that I miss him. Whenever he gets stuck in a Gemara, or he gets stuck in a Mechaz it was a pleasure to be able to ask him anything and right away get a clear answer. Not I'll look it up, I'll see, I'll get back to you. It was Vishinantam, Shayyidi Vratayra, Shnunin Vifiha, Sharp, Altigam Gimatayim Rabbi. The Gemara says, Nishkachti Kamesh Milei Vaisi Kichli Aibe. Like a Kaili that's lost, your Miyayish after Yudbe is Chaydish, a Mace is Mishtakach Menalev after Yudbe is Chaydish. Somehow a Hirschbrook is not forgotten. 
I think I know why. When a person loses someone, you know what you lost. There's a hole, there's a pain. And time closes the hole. Time heals the pain. What if you know that you lost something, but you have no idea what you lost? You know that whatever you lost is far beyond you could have imagined. How can you heal a hole like that? You, you, you know that you never quite mourned enough. He is truly irreplaceable. And we'll never know what we lost. The only thing I can say is when I ever come to his caver, I am no one, but I say to him that you were always considerate and concerned for every single year in the city. So the same way you were then, you should be now. Whatever people in the city need, whether it's your family, whether it's your friends, whether it's your Talmidim, or just about anybody, please be a Melis Yosha for them. Because that's how you were when you lived. Hashem should help that he should be a Melis Yosha for his family, for the Drezen family that he was close to, and for all Yidin of the city. Because I believe, I just say, whenever I used to come into Dabna Rosh Hashanah and the I used to look at him in the front, and I would say, Rabbi Shalom, I'm with him. We had somebody here that, that really was a, a Megan on the city. Hashem should help that he should continue being a Megan on the city, continue being a Megan's Yashem. Yeah, I should be. Okay.